If you have followed me on social media this last couple of years, you will no doubt see that I'm a massive fan of AppSync. And I think it's the best way to build data-driven applications on AWS and let me take on work that used to take a whole team to accomplish. In fact, I helped a client build and ship a new social network in just a few weeks using AppSync, Lambda, and DynamoDB. And it's an incredibly productive stack. And you can learn to master this stack and build a full stack Twitter clone from scratch with my other course, the AppSync Masterclass. If you haven't checked it out already, please go to appsyncmasterclass.com and sign up for a free preview. But if you're here and trying to learn how to test AppSync APIs, then I suspect you already know what AppSync is and realize that it works quite differently from API Gateway. So our test strategy has to account for AppSync specific features and constraints. But our ultimate goal is the same, to gain confidence that our API works and catch any bugs as early as possible. And so, just as we did with API Gateway, let's start by looking at AppSync and figure out all the moving parts that we need to consider in our test strategy. Firstly, there's the authentication and authorization, and AppSync supports quite a few different options, including OpenID Connect, Cognito, AWS IAM, API Key, and the custom Lambda authorizers. And then there's the resolvers, which is the bread and butter of an AppSync API, and you have lots and lots of these. There are two types of AppSync resolvers. There's the unit resolver, which is the most common resolver as you see, and it lets you perform a single action, such as to do a get item operation against DynamoDB. And then there's the pipeline resolvers, which lets you chain a series of pipeline functions together so that you can perform multiple operations in a sequence inside a single resolver. Both of these resolvers act on data sources, such as Lambda functions or DynamoDB tables. And to fetch data from these data sources, you have to write request templates in VTO, which is not everyone's cup of tea, to put it mildly. And as I mentioned earlier, you can configure Lambda functions as the data source behind a resolver. So you can trigger a Lambda invocation to resolve a field in the GraphQL request. And as we discussed many times already on this course, whenever you have Lambda functions, you've got to think about testing your domain logic as well as integration logic and IAM permissions. But AppSync supports other data sources as well and lets you integrate with other AWS services directly. And you can even use the HTTP data source to integrate with other non AWS services, such as your own microservices or other third party SaaS applications, such as Twilio or MailChimp. And lastly, you also have to consider the response template as well, again, written in VTO which maps the response from the data source to the return value you want to include in the GraphQL response. Okay, so these are the main components that we need to consider in our test strategy. Let's start with Lambda. Once again, we can target different aspects of our Lambda function with different types of tests. The approach here is exactly the same as what we saw in the last chapter for API Gateway. With the authentication and authorization mechanisms, again, like with API Gateway, most of these are best tested as part of our end-to-end -end tests. And for Lambda authorizers, we can also write unit and integration tests so that we can catch problems in our code without having to wait for a full deployment cycle. With AppSync, however, we have VTL requests and the response templates. And even though we looked at some VTL examples in the last chapter, and I stated that there's no good way to test those VTL templates for API Gateway. Luckily for us, there is a way to test and evaluate VTL templates for AppSync by using a new feature that AppSync released in July 2022. So we can use this and the right unit tests for our VTL templates, which is great. But 
This will still suffer from the usual problems with unit tests, in that our assertions are based on our understanding of what a correct request or response template should look like. And these tests won't tell us if our understanding is wrong, which is why we will still need end-to-end -end tests to make sure that our templates actually work. And finally, there's the direct service integrations, which AppSync supports a number of native integrations to DynamoDB, Amazon Elasticsearch, and Aurora Serverless version 1. But you can also use the HTTP data source to integrate with most of the other AWS services as well, because most of them has a REST API, and when you use the HTTP data source, AppSync would automatically sign the HTTP request using whatever IAM role that you have configured for the data source. And you can also use the HTTP data source to integrate with your own microservices and other third-party SaaS applications. And as with API Gateway, these direct integrations are best tested as part of your end-to-end -end tests. And so that's all the different moving parts and how we're going to cover them in our tests. And most of this is already covered in the AppSync Masterclass if you have done that course already. But the new AppSync API for testing VTL templates was released after the course was finished. So that's something new that you can look forward to. And without further ado, let's dive into the code and have a look how we can implement this strategy. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this preview lesson from my latest course, Testing Serverless Architectures, where I'll teach you everything I know about testing including dedicated chapters on each type of popular architecture and demonstrate how to efficiently test them and overcome the challenges that are specific to each architectural style and service. Along the way, you will learn so much, including how to think and strategize about your approach to testing, what are the different types of tests you need and when you should use which and the why and the how to use ephemeral environments to make testing and the collaboration so much easier. How to debug failing end-to-end -end tests and the why they are important signal that you shouldn't ignore. And we'll talk about the challenges of testing event-driven architectures and some really helpful tips and tricks that's going to make testing so much easier even in a complex environment with lots of different event publishers and consumers. And we'll touch on testing in production, what it means, and the popular practices such as smoke testing, feature toggling, and of course, chaos engineering. You will have access to all the lectures as well as to the exclusive member-only project so that you can try these ideas out for yourself. And you can also get 15% off with the code on the screen right now. So hope to see you there. Until then, bye for now.